This is the third part. We're going to continue with this uh, blog video and I'm going to talk about what is selective coordination in this one. And let's see, we have what is selective coordination, how selective coordination is actually done or performed, and achieving selective coordination using ETAP. Now, what is selective coordination? Complete selectivity means that the protective device will minimize the effect of a short circuit or other undesirable events on the power system. So what we're saying here is that, you know, the closest breaker that feeds that particular faulted area is the one that actually operates and that, that localizes that um, problem area. So what we're saying is that if the fault is beyond CB5, we should expect CB5 to trip and we should not expect CB2 or CB1 to trip for that particular fault. Coordination by itself means that they are coordinated to the best of their abilities but they're not perfectly coordinated. So how is selective coordination done? By zone, well, all we're saying is that, you know, certain breakers have certain zones. That makes our lives a lot easier to kind of comprehend this. Now, achieving selective coordination uh, using ETAP. And so it's furthest to the left because it will operate in the shortest amount of current. We said that the current was on the x-axis. And we can see that if like a 300 amps of current, for example, would flow, then it's going to trip in perhaps like 20 seconds, for example. Here's, here's like the, the coordination between the two. So CB1 is the furthest downstream, so we should expect it to be on the left side. And then CB2 is on the back, on the top most, so we should expect that to be on the right side. And then there's no overlapping regions. Mm -hmm.